Hey everyone, welcome back to a new video. Today is going to be a free furniture flip. So I was on Facebook Marketplace the other day and I came across this table, four chairs and two lamps for free. The guy told me that as long as I got there before two, it was mine, so I went and grabbed it. And in today's video, I'm gonna share with you guys a full transformation on this table, taking it from something a little bit more outdated to something brand new again. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Check it out. The table is all like set up. Um, I love the backing here. I think this is gonna look so pretty if I can get that to like a really nice natural cane color. The table, I'm definitely sanding it down. The wood grain on this table is stunning. So I'll be working on that. Um, I think the chairs I'm gonna do, oh, I'm kind of debating. I wanna do this like a natural cane. I'm thinking a dark color for the actual chairs and the light wood for the top. Whatever color of the, of the backing I do, I want the chairs to, or the table to match that. I think that's gonna look so nice. And then like have the pop with the black chairs. Obviously the wheels are coming off because those do not look updated at all. But I think overall the actual piece itself is, ah, oh, it's so good. So um, yeah, I need to get all these cushions off. I am debating on whether or not I should paint these and do like a faux leather or if I should actually re-wrap them. Um, I haven't quite decided yet what I want to do, but that's going to be like the last step because um, obviously I don't want to get like paint on them or anything like that. So right now the focus is going to be getting the tabletop sanded down. I'm not going to focus on trying to sand all the chairs down to natural wood color. That's never going to happen. It's going to take way too long. <laughs> so um yeah cheers for a good project <laughs> all right i just got back from lowe's and walmart i had to get quite a bit of stuff um so i did get a couple different stains to test they were on the back of my truck so i drove off with them but not all of them oh no. they're in the truck i still have more okay i didn't open all of them out okay um but anyway i had to get some supplies for this project so i got some sandpaper I got a big pack, 15 sheets. Um, so this is the Gator brand. I actually have a Craftsman, but it was cheaper to buy these than to buy the Craftsman because you get more. So I got those. And then I got this little variety pack. I got some reusable gloves, some tack cloths, staining pads. I've never used these before, so I'm gonna try those out. Paint brushes, and then a couple different wood stains to try. So this one is called Spicy Brown by Valspar. It's a... Um, it's solid stain, so it's not going to be transparent. I think I'm going to use that here on the cane DIY backing. Um, and then I got fruit wood and weathered oak. I'm not sure which one which one's going to work best for the table, so I'm just going to wing it. But I'm going to start off by sanding like a hidden small area. Why is this so blurry? I'm sorry, guys. I'm trying. I'm going to try to sand down a spot that you can't see, um, like maybe like up underneath here, just to see what happens. Um, like what's what the color is up underneath all this so that way I'll know which color to go with okay so I'm taking my little craftsman sander now this is a detail mouse type of sander I wouldn't recommend for a project like this to be honest I need a orbital sander I just I've added that to the list of tools that I need that I'm on the hunt for and I will eventually get them <laughs> but for now I'm just going to use what I have on hand so I took my sander and I'm using an 80 grit sandpaper and I'm going to sand down the entire top um, this did take a lot of time I took a lot of breaks in between and I it ended up turning into a two-day job not only was it time consuming but I also went through a lot of sandpaper which adds to the cost of the project and I I love to like include these little details because these are important um, I feel like a lot of times we watch these before and after clips and we you know see the before and afters and we we don't see that all the little added details all the cost of all the little things and those things add up and it can easily turn a project from being affordable to very expensive quick and that is something you definitely want to keep in mind if you are getting into the market of like furniture flipping. Just try to look for pieces that need minimal work and that aren't going to cost a lot to flip. Um, so this piece here could have easily been resold, but unfortunately I live in an area where like flipped furniture or just furniture in general does not sell for very much, um, like on Facebook Marketplace or anything like that. So 
had I not touched this, this table in particular, I probably could have listed it for maybe $50 or $60. I would have been lucky to get $50 for it. And I'm not being dramatic. That's just the honest truth. It is outdated. Um, and it being on wheels as well, just not really, really appealing. And the worst part is the we without the wheels, the chairs are too short. So the wheels have to stay. <laughs> and I, re I realized that pretty quick in. And I was like, oh my gosh, how am I going to make this table look good with wheels on it? So uh, what I'm trying to tell you is that I accidentally overspent on this project. Um, it was supposed to be like a quick flip and just kind of use what I had on hand but then the style I wanted to go with I didn't really have anything so I had to buy things and like something else that I didn't account for um, is I've never upholstered anything so I ended up having to reupholster the seat cushions and so I didn't have a stapler I had to buy one um, I had to go buy fabric for that and it was ten dollars a yard for the faux leather that I wanted um, and I ended up needing two yard or it was like a yard and a half um, so it wasn't too bad but just little expenses added up and I just wanted to share. So in case you're trying to get into the furniture flipping business to earn a profit, just keep in mind that there are expenses that go into it and just make sure that whatever piece you're flipping, the amount that you put into it, you're going to be able to sell and make that money back and then some because that, that's what will make it worth it. Um, and the truth is, I will be lucky to make a profit on this table after what I ended up spending to flip it, but it did turn out pretty. All right, so I am just taking this tack cloth. This is actually the first time I've ever used one of these and I didn't realize that they were sticky. Um, I don't know why I didn't know that. Um, I just always assumed that it was like a microfiber cloth or something, but they're sticky. It feels gross, just so you know. Um, <laughs> but I used that to get all the dust off and then I'm going in with a custom stain color that I made. So this is the color Spicy Brown in the Valspar stain and sealer mix. Now this color was a solid, um, it, it was a solid stain so I obviously didn't want to paint that on this table because then you wouldn't get to see the wood grain. So what I did was I added some to a jar and I added just a tiny splash of water to it just to make it a little bit more um, transparent and voila it creates the most beautiful stain color. I've used this technique plenty of times. I actually Typically, I use the color October Brown. You all have seen me use that a lot on my, my fence. Actually, those boards that are back there in the background, the wood slats that we have going up the carport, that is in the color October Brown that's been watered down. Um, this method just works really great for me. I feel like the color is, it's unique. It's not too orange. It's not too... Um, red toned. I don't know. I just, I think it's a really great warm stain color. So spicy brown mix a little bit of water and I'm just using those staining pads that I purchased and I'm just really buffing that in to get a nice full coverage and make sure that I'm going in the same direction as the wood. I know the next morning when the sun goes out might be the last day of you and me You're lying next to me with heavy eyes While I shiver inside with a heavy heart I know what I've done And I'm too afraid to let it go If I could, I would turn back Good morning, y'all. It is the next day. I am about to get started on the table again. Um, today, we're gonna be working on taking the cushions off the chairs, taping off the backing so I can leave that natural, and then I'm gonna be spray painting the actual chairs themselves. Now, I have had the hardest time with this table. 
And I, in my last DIY flip, I had a lot of you guys leave constructive criticism saying, stop being so hard on your projects, you do a great job, like stop critiquing your work, you are your own worst critic, and I 100% agree, that is true. Um, but I just want you guys to know that when I do share these types of things, I'm being real and honest and telling you how I feel about what I'm working on. I wanna share these moments because I feel like it's a lot more realistic than, oh wow, I just love this project, I love this project, and I did a great job on this. I just feel like that comes off very conceited because it's not true, that's not how I feel about every project. So I'm being my authentic self by telling you how I feel in the moment. Um, the end result, most of the time I end up loving it, but it's not always the case leading up to that moment. So. Um, just know if you ever hear me critiquing my work, I'm not trying to tear myself down. I think I'm just trying to teach myself lessons along the way. I'm learning. I am just being honest with how I feel. Um, so I appreciate those who understand that it's not just a negative outlook on myself. I promise it's not that. It's just deep down inside. I do have a little bit of perfectionism in me when it comes to certain things, especially when it comes to my work. I take a lot of pride in what I do. I love what I do. Um, and I think that that's why I tend to be a little bit more hard on myself. But it's not that I'm not proud. You know what I'm saying? So please don't like get those two confused. It's not that I'm like hating on myself or anything like that. I'm just being a little critical so I can learn from my mistakes. But learning from my mistakes is definitely a thing that happens along the way. All right, so right now I'm just working on taking the cushions off of the chairs. Don't worry about the wheels. I'll take those off at the very end, but right now them being on wheels is actually very helpful. So out of love, never get enough. We never seem to get older. When things are going right, we seem to have the time. But when it's hard, you just grow cold up. We should be good, but we keep lighting fires. The words you be, cause we're scared of the silence. We should be good, but we keep lighting fires. Fires around ourselves. We should be good, but we keep lighting fires. The words you be, cause we're scared of the silence. We should be good, but we keep lighting fires. Fires around ourselves. It's deja vu. Set up a stage of flights Say we're done, say it's over Shouldn't be coming back But somehow we connect Acting drunk even though we're so so the original plan was to go with the Venetian bronze paint color. It's the same color I use on my husband's dresser makeover. That spray paint has held up really great. And I actually purchased a whole lot of that paint. I was going to paint the bar stools that I got. But so many of you convinced me to just live with the bar stools as they are. <laughs> if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll link that video below. Um, but I actually have fallen in love with the green bar stools. <laughs> so I'm not painting them at this moment. Um, so... When I started painting the first chair, the Venetian bronze, you can see the bronzy color on that first chair. It just wasn't, it wasn't what I wanted. So I decided to go back to the store and just grab some matte black spray paint. So what I'm using is the Rust-Oleum. It's the American Accents two times ultra cover matte spray paint. It's in the color black. So just very basic, um, but this has excellent excellent coverage this is one coat that i'm spraying on right now on these chairs over here and you can see just how great it looks um i mean look at this it just covers so so good highly highly recommend this paint um you obviously do want to seal very well if you are spray painting anything um you're going to want to make sure that you seal it with a great sealant um the sealant that i purchased is also a rust-oleum um sealant let me look it up real quick and see what it was called i want to say Let's see, let's see. So it's the clear Rust-Oleum um, Satin Protective Enamel is what I used to seal these chairs once I was done and I let them dry for a good 48 hours. You don't want to go in right after spray painting and seal because it does take time for it to adhere to whatever you're spray painting, but um, you definitely want to put some type of clear coat 
over this or they will get scratched up. Um, so now moving on to the seats. I have never wrapped anything in any type of fabric ever in my life. Never. This was the first. So I decided to take some YouTube University. I hopped on YouTube and I looked up how to upholster a seat and um, yeah, this came up. I watched a couple videos on it and I just kind of once I, I'm like a very hands-on person. Once I do something, I'm like, okay, I got it. Now this next one got better and I got better and better with time. And so I actually included the footage of me working on three cushions total. And you can see from the first one here to the last one, I definitely figured out what worked best for me as far as technique goes. And really, I think the hardest part is obviously smoothing out your corners. Um, but once you figure out how to get it smooth, it's really easy. It just... It takes a lot of hand strength though. I will say that. It takes a lot of hand strength. Like there was a couple times where like this stapler, I didn't even think I was going to be able to pull the trigger on the stapler. I was like, why is this so hard? <laughs> this is, doing upholstery is not my strong suit, but you can add that to the resume. But what's really funny is the amount of fabric that I ended up cutting off because whenever, okay, so when I went to Joanne's Fabric, by the way, is where I got this uh, leather, this full leather. I really like the color of it. It's very good neutral. Um, the lady was super helpful because I obviously had never done any upholstery before. I didn't even know how much fabric to get. Like I, I literally showed her a picture of what I was working on. I was like, hey, I'm trying to wrap these four cushions. Um, how much fabric do you think I'll need? And she was like, oh, you can get away with like a yard and a half. So I went ahead and got two yards just to be safe. I definitely had more than enough. And you can see I was cutting my fabric a little too big. I probably would have had a lot a lot left over had I done a better job with that, but I didn't know what I was doing. I was, you know, kind of winging it. Um, <laughs> but like this one looked really bad. I was like, why is there so much fabric? So when I got to the last one that I did, that one I got way better and I didn't cut as big of a piece. So I didn't waste as much, which was really nice. And this one, I actually did a really good job. When you flipped it over, it looked so perfect. So I was really proud. And I, I like yelled out, I was like, woohoo, but I had the music playing, so I couldn't share the audio. Um, but then Zoe heard me and she was like, what is it, mom? Why are you so excited? <laughs> All right, so moving on to the last cushion. This one went probably the smoothest out of all of them just because at this point I had already done three, you know, previous to this one. So I really got a system down. It was just stretch, pull, hold, staple. It really, it went by pretty quick. Um, and, but I did see a video online where someone recommended using a blow dryer to help round out the corner so you don't have any like wrinkles or anything. So I wanted to try that and see if I recommended it. Um, this type of leather, obviously it's faux leather. It's a little bit on the cheaper side. I paid $10 a yard for this. So I don't know. It, it didn't heat up really well <laughs> with the blow dryer. So I wouldn't recommend. Um, I didn't want to burn it. So I kept it kind of far away, you know, just enough to like warm it up. But I felt like it did just as good with my hands as it did with the blow dryer. So it really didn't make much of a difference. After getting all the cushions done, I moved outside to work on sealing the tabletop and the legs of the table. Um, so I'm using a product called Polycrylic. This is a Minwax brand, and this is in the finish Clear Satin. I'm also using a foam brush to apply this because I have found that the foam brush gives the most smooth, professional finish, um, and that's just from personal experience. You can use, uh, you can either use a paintbrush, you can use a roller, like a foam roller, or you can use the foam brush like I'm doing here. Um, the biggest tip with using this polycrylic is to work fast and to go in the same direction as the wood grain. You obviously don't want not just the wood grain, but don't just like slop it on and just go in all different directions or you're going to be able to see, you're going to know. <laughs> so same direction back and forth. It's best to do just like one long stroke from one side of the table all the way across. Um, you can see here I'm kind of going back and forth, but that's just because I start out heavy with the product on one spot and I kind of just work that product around to give a nice thin coat. I always personally start with one thing really thin coat across the whole table and then I add thicker layers on top of that. This product also dries very fast so you got to move kind of quick when you're working with it. Any drips or runs or anything like that you want to try to pick up immediately so try really hard to pay attention as you're working because using the poly or any type of sealant can really ruin a really great job. <laughs> so just um, work fast and really pay attention to what you're doing. 
All right, so moving on to the second coat, you can see that first coat already looks so good. Um, and the second coat does go on a lot faster just because it's not soaking into the wood as quick, so it's easier to smooth out. Um, so yeah, this it turned out so, so pretty. But I also wanted to point out, I did decide to paint the legs of the table black. I did not like the wood color. I felt like it just didn't look right. The two, it, it almost looked like two different types of wood. It just, it wasn't what I was looking for. So I just, I decided to go with black just because the chairs were black and just try to have like a little bit more of a cohesive flow with the table and chairs. So now I'm going to go ahead and work on um, finishing up the chairs here. I had to peel off all the paper and tape. Um, everything turned out really great except for there was a couple spots where the spray paint sprayed through the paper and I just, the only thing I could think of to do to get it off was to get some nail polish remover and a cotton pad and I just rubbed off any areas where the spray paint seeped through the paper. So it turned out it wasn't even the paper to begin with. I think it was just sometimes whenever you're over spraying, if you accidentally get too much paint on the paper it's going to seep through regardless it makes sense now <laughs> but yeah I just took that little cotton pad with some nail polish remover and worked on cleaning up all the chairs now once I get all the chairs done I did want to include a little bit of the footage of when I first brought the table and chairs in and how the family reacted to it um, y'all always ask like what my family thinks of my projects and stuff so I thought I would include the audio the video is blurred on purpose for the protection of my children um, just so you guys know it is blurry on purpose I just wanted to share the audio with you guys oh, cool. I love this, I love this. <laughs> I'm glad you like it. Yeah, this could be an accident waiting to happen though. Just kind of a little way to. <laughs> All right, so it's time for some before and afters. Here is just a reminder on how the table looked before, and this is what it looks like now. So what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. I think it turned out pretty darn good from where it was. Um, it's a totally different look in my opinion, but I think it turned out great. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't take the wheels off because the chairs would be way too short, almost like child short. So I decided to keep them on and that's why I decided to go with the black chairs to help disguise the wheels a little bit. And I think overall, the end result turned out really beautiful. It actually looks really great in my space. I feel like all the colors really flow nicely with my house, um, but I need to know your opinion. Let me know in the comments and thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today while I tackled this project. Um, I really appreciate your support so much and I will see all of you guys in my next video. Bye y'all.